All right, Jackson. You're on. Me? You're the linguist. Try to talk to him. I'm Colonel G.T. Weber. We never formally met, but two years ago you did some Farsi translations for Army Intelligence. Hmm. You made quick work of those uh, insurgent videos. I have something I need you to translate for me. Now you heard it. What do you make of it? Where do I come from? Hoxton. Well, who said I didn't? Blimey, you know everything you do. Well, you, sir, do you think you could find me a taxi? I don't know whether you've noticed it, madam, but it stopped raining. You can get a motor bus to uh, Hampton Court. Well, that's where you live, isn't it? What impertinence. Yeah, <laughs> tell him where he comes from. You want to go fortune telling? Cheltenham, Harrow, Cambridge, and uh, India. Quite right. Yeah. Blimey, he ain't a tech. He's a blooming busybody. If I may ask you, do you do this sort of thing for a living at a music hall? Well, I have thought of it. Perhaps I will one day. He's no gentleman. He ain't interfere with a poor girl. How do you do it, may I ask? Simple phonetics, <laughs> the science of speech. That's my profession. Also my hobby. Your book, Mr. Murray, will need to establish strict rules banning such offenses, beyond which it should fix all spellings, lay down proper pronunciations, and firm up correctness of speech. We have been here before, Max. What of all the bamboozles, the wouldn'ts, the shouldn'ts, and the couldn'ts to come in the future? The tongue is at its purest peak, sufficiently refined that it can henceforward only deteriorate. It is up to us to fix it once and for all. Alterations to it can then be permitted or not. And who do you have do the permitting? You, Max? Mm. Me? No. All words are valid in the language. Ancient or new, obsolete or robust, foreign-born or homegrown. The book must inventory every word, every nuance, every twist of etymology, every possible illustrated citation from every English author. All of it or nothing at all. That would mean reading everything quoting everything that showed anything to do with the history of the words that are to be cited. The task is gigantic, monumental. And impossible. All right, Eliza, say it again. They rhyme in spine, stays mainly in the plain. The rain in Spain stays mainly in the plain. Didn't I say that? No, Eliza, you didn't sigh that. You didn't even say that. Now, every night before you get into bed, where you used to say your prayers, I want you to say, the rain in Spain stays mainly in the plain 50 times. Come here, Eliza, and watch closely. Now, can you see that flame? Every time you pronounce the letter H correctly, the flame will waver, and every time you drop your H, the flame will remain stationary. That's how you'll know if you've done it correctly. In time, your ear will hear the difference. See it better in the mirror. Now, listen carefully. In Hartford, Hereford, and Hampshire, 
hurricanes hardly ever happen. Now, repeat that after me. In Hartford, Hereford and Hampshire, hurricanes hardly ever happen. In Hartford, Hereford and Hampshire, hurricanes hardly ever happen. Oh, no, 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 no. I have no ear at all. Shall I do it over? No, please. Start from the very beginning. Just do this. Go, ha, 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 ha. Ha, 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 ha. Wait, just a, just a minute. What's it going to Here, here. Tatanka. Tatanka? Tatanka. Tatanka. Right here. Tatanka. 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 Buffalo. Go. Oh. Buffalo. Tatanka. Buffalo. Buff. 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 Buffalo. Tatanka. So you're going to have to give me more than that. Kangaroo. What is that? In 1770. Captain James Cook's ship ran aground off the coast of Australia and he led a party into the country and they met the Aboriginal people. One of the sailors pointed at the animals that hop around and put their babies in their pouch and he asked what they were and the Aborigines said, kangaroo. And a point is? It wasn't until later that they learned that kangaroo means I don't understand. So I need this so that we don't misinterpret things in there. Otherwise, this is going to take 10 times as long. I can show that for now. But I need you to submit your vocabulary words before the next session. Yeah. You're gonna teach them your name and Ian's. Yeah, so that we can learn their names if they have names and then introduce pronouns later. These are all grade school words. Eat, walk. Help me understand. Oh, no, 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 not the top. OK, this is where you want to get to, right? That is the question. OK, so first we need to make sure that they understand what a question is, OK? The nature of a request for information along with the response. Then we need to clarify the difference between a specific you and a collective you, because we don't want to know why Joe Alien is here. We want to know why they all landed. And purpose requires an understanding of intent. We need to find out, do they make conscious choices or is their motivation so instinctive that they don't understand a why question at all? And, and biggest of all, we need to have enough vocabulary with them that we understand their answer. Forget it. Stick to your list. I was doing some, some reading um, about this idea that if you immerse yourself into a foreign language that you can actually rewire your brain. The yeah, sapphire wharf hypothesis. Mm. The theory that, uh, it, it's the theory that uh, the language you speak determines how you think and. Yeah, it affects how you see everything. It was, uh, I'm curious, are you dreaming in their language?
gift. The weapon is their language. They gave it all to us. Do you understand what that means? So we can learn half the plot, if we survive. If you learn it, when you really learn it, you begin to perceive time the way that they do. So, so you can see what's to come. But time, it, it isn't the same for them. It's non-linear. Speak committee. Working overtime. Plus big wastages and adjectives. Plus big problem is timing the language to scientific advance. Yes. It's a beautiful thing, the destruction of words. You won't have seen the dictionary, 10th edition yet, Smith. It's that thick. The 11th edition will be that thick. So, well, the revolution will be complete when the language is perfect. The secret is to move from translation to direct thought to automatic response. No need for self discipline. Hmm? Language coming from here, not from here. Excuse me for intruding. But what you're saying is that we should be rid of the last vestiges of Goldsteinism when the language has been cleaned. I couldn't be more in agreement with you, brother. Absolutely. code we've thrown at them. The Corps developed the new code based on the Navajo language. You're to pair with a code talker. Your job is to keep him alive so he can do his job. And, uh, get the Navy on the horn and tell him to dig out those guns! Target reference. Target one. Right 700. Elevation 050. show you, you will be executed for high treason. It's beautiful. It's the greatest encryption device in history, and the Germans use it for all communications. Everyone thinks Enigma is unbreakable. I'm designing a machine that will allow us to break every message, every day, instantly. Voltages through those letters, through the background. Okay, so we'll use the loop. Yes, Joan, what was the last 6 a.m. message? L. 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 H. H. W. W. A. Q. Ready? Done. I need a new message. The latest intercept. Hello. Yeah. Ready? Yes. M. M. Y. Y. M. M. S. S. A. A. 
I. I. C. C. T. T. R. R. I. I. S. S. O. O. A. A. Y. Y. R. R. I. I. Okay, Miss Jaguar, it's Alf Punkt is directed to 53 degrees 24 minutes north and Alf Punkt 1 degree west. <laughs> yes! <laughs> <laughs> Unibomb stands for University and Airline Bombing because the culprit initially targeted colleges and aircraft companies, leading profilers to think he was probably a lower educated man who once worked for the airlines. Not right. The bombs came disguised as ordinary packages addressed to anyone from professors to CEOs. Part of the terror derived from the unpredictability. Along the way, the Unabomber sometimes sent typewritten letters, allowing FBI teams to analyze them and build their own profile. The Bureau now admits his occupation proved more elusive, with theories ranging from aircraft mechanic to scientist. Even the gender was not certain. Although investigators believe the bomber was most likely male, they also investigated several female suspects. Then, the turning point. In the mid-90s, a new FBI profiler named James Fitzgerald, or Fitz, basically started from scratch, built something brand new, a picture that assumed the Unabomber held a doctorate was secluded and highly intelligent. Once a manifesto arrived in 1995, 35,000 words long, many of those assumptions were confirmed. The bomber was a man, using words like broad and chick. He also used the phrase, eat your cake and have it too. According to an NPR interview, this suggested the writer had his roots in Chicago, Illinois, because there was some terminology in there that was reflective of three or four newspapers in Chicago through the 30s, 40s, and 50s. We very much were in favor of, of publishing it because after reading the manifesto, it was clear that someone had uh, had put their philosophy that had evolved over a number of years within the pages of this thing. Uh, it was recognizable. Somebody in reading this, we hoped, would, would read it and say, I remember that guy. He was uh, sat next to me in class uh, at uh, such and such a university. Eventually, the Washington Post published that full manifesto, and Kaczynski's sister-in-law recognized some of the language. Her husband came forward, and the FBI found their guide. The FBI analyzed the essay and found over 160 examples of similarities with the Unabomber manifesto, including common phrases and misspellings. The list went on and on. The final step was getting a warrant to raid the bomber's rural cabin in Montana. A federal judge, for the first time in American history, says Fitz, approved the warrant thanks to forensic linguistic evidence that his team built clue by clue, word by word. You didn't do the work, I asked. Please pick those up. Coco, you are very good at that. Please pick them up. Come on, Their relationship is like no other. 
Penny and Coco are the first human and gorilla to share a common language. Penny taught Coco to speak sign language. Play with them after you help. Okay? No, no, not fake. No. What? Their exchanges, their conversations were enchanting and quickly revealed the power language has to build a bridge between our species. Then you go and you bring those papers. Look, there are stars. Can you find the eyes in this picture? Right, those are the eyes. Critics of okay. ape language studies claim that the animals are not creating true language, that it is merely mimicry or responses evoked by inadvertent cues. Patterson is quick to point out that Coco often signs to herself. In this case, several repetitions of flower and hat. Clearly, Patterson says, something more complex than mimicry is involved in the mental capacities Coco displays. Okay, no, Coco, I asked you to stay over here. Perhaps criticism will abate as apes begin to sign to each other. Patterson reports instances of this between Coco and Mike and hopes they will eventually pass on their abilities to their offspring. But work aside at day's end, there is time now just for fun. you have a name? Yes. Ava. I'm pleased to meet you, Ava. I'm pleased to meet you, too. I've never met anyone new before. Only Nathan. Then I guess we're both in quite a similar position. Haven't you met lots of new people before? None like you. So we need to break the ice. Do you know what I mean by that? Yes. What do I mean? Overcome initial social awkwardness. So let's have a conversation. Okay. What would you like to have a conversation about? Why don't we start with you telling me something about yourself? What would you like to know? Whatever comes into your head. Well, you already know my name and you can see that I'm a machine. Would you like to know how old I am? Sure. I'm one. One what? One year or one day? One. When did you learn how to speak, Ava? I always knew how to speak. And that's strange, isn't it? Why? Because language is something that people acquire. Well? Some people believe language exists from birth, and what is learned is the ability to attach words and structure to the latent ability. Do you agree with that? I don't know. This is the, the brain of a man in his 70s who died of a cancer-related death. So it's essentially, from a neuropathological perspective, a normal brain. But the, the vast majority of the brain is the uh, cerebrum, which is divided into left and right cerebral hemispheres. So when you look from the outside of the brain, you, what you're seeing really is a cerebral cortex. So different areas of the cerebral cortex are involved in different functions, different neurological functions. So the area I've marked in blue at the back of the temporal lobe is Wernicke's area. And that's an area that's important in the comprehension of language. The other important speech area, which I've marked in red here, is at the bottom of the frontal lobe, the left frontal lobe, and that is called Broca's area. And that's responsible for the production and planning of speech. And so in the vast majority of people, language areas are entirely on the left hemisphere. Language is something that's almost completely uniquely human, and it's one of the things that has enabled us to do so well as a species. And the reason for that, I think, is because 
it allows us to model the world. So how can we plan for something that we're going to do next Wednesday if we don't have language? So next Wednesday allows us to talk about a specific potential event forward in time. And without language, we can't really do that. We can have a concept of time and a concept of things happening in the future or the past, and I suspect other animals do that. But for precise planning, we really need language. And language is a form of abstraction. It's, it's a way of abstracting the world and getting control of it. Alice Howland is the Lillian Young Professor of Linguistics at Columbia University. She famously wrote her seminal textbook, From Neurons to Nouns, while raising three children. I'm sure getting more than a few aha moments from them. And it is now considered one of the cornerstones of linguistics education all over the world. Please, welcome Dr. Alice Howland. Thank you so much. Most children speak and understand their mother tongue before the age of four without lessons, homework, or much in the way of feedback. How do they accomplish this remarkable feat? Well, this is a question that has interested scientists at least since Charles Darwin kept a diary of the early language of his infant son. He observed, man has an instinctive tendency to speak as we see in the babble of young children. Much has been learned since then. But today, I'd like to focus on some recent studies from my lab on the acquisition of past tense irregular verb forms in children between the ages of 18 months and two and a half years. Now, you may say that this falls into the great academic tradition of knowing more and more about less and less until we know everything about nothing. May I have a cookies and cream and a chocolate hazelnut? Uh, Alice, you know what you want, right? Cookies and cream and a chocolate hazelnut. Well, no, honey, you usually have the original with the blueberries and coconut. Okay. Original with blueberries and coconut, please. <laughs> Ali, you see that building over there? Do you know what that is? I don't think I know that. It's Columbia, where you used to teach. Someone told me I was a good teacher. Yes, you were. I was really smart. You were the smartest person I've ever met. Allie, do you still want to be here? I'm not done yet. Do we have to go? No. Don't worry. Take your time. Par ma caille, 
Na, de vigos pu. Professor? Since childhood, I have been fascinated with language. Obsessed with it. I've invented my own. Full, complete languages. Look, this is... it's... it's everything. From the... the brayest hoard. My heart, the treasure of the breast. And the drawings? I made stories. Legends. Uh, after all, what is language for? It's, it's not just the naming of things, is it? It's the lifeblood of a culture, a people. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yes. What's it about? It's about journeys. Ventures. Magic, of course. Treasure. And love. About all kinds of things, really. It's hard to say, I suppose. I suppose it's about quests, to a certain extent, the journeys we take to prove ourselves. About courage. Fellowship. It's about fellowship. It's friendship. Little people just like you. I'm not little. No. no. Little in stature, not little in spirit. It's about wizards, too. Wizards? Wizards, yes. And mountains, dragons. Amen. 